Today's video lesson is on translating words into expressions. There are multiple words in the English language that will translate into addition. And I'm going to categorize those into two different categories. One of the categories is we keep the order. So if I said the sum of a number and seven, as in example one here, the sum of a number and seven. Sum in the English language means addition, but it also means that the order isn't going to change. So the numbers and words that I use after that are going to keep the same order. So if I said the sum of a number and seven, then the a number, we don't know what that number is, so we use a variable like n or x and indicates the operator and then 7. But the order of the language doesn't change. Then we have the types of words that change order or are built backwards. So I always tell my students if you see a then or a from, which we'll talk about when we get into subtraction, then you actually need to write it backwards. It's built backwards. So if we have an example like eight more than a number, when you see the word more than, you should think addition. But because of the word then in there, it's built backwards, which means that the eight is going to go behind the addition symbol and the number which again, we don't know, so we use a variable, is going to go in front of the addition symbol. You want to be extra cautious with this when we get to subtraction. In addition, it doesn't matter whether I have 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2. The result is still going to be 5, but with subtraction it really is going to matter greatly. Um, so I highly suggest you um, take notes of these words along the left-hand side here, sum, total, all together, increased by, plus, more than, greater than, older than, and added to. And if there's any of those words or phrases that you are not familiar with, I would definitely write them down and memorize them and so that you know that they all indicate addition. And again, it's that word then... Okay, that you want to be extra careful of when it comes to subtraction and then make sure that you write it in the correct order. So let's go ahead and look at translating subtraction. So again, lots of words in the English language mean subtraction. So along the left hand side you can see that we've got the word difference, less, decreased by, minus, and then the ones that are particularly built backwards are less than, fewer than, younger than, or from. Notice all these words have then or from in them. Okay, so when you see the word then or from, you should always think that these are backwards. Okay, so the order of the English is going to change when you write the a a algebraic expression. So look at example one, the difference of a number and seven. So when you see the word difference, difference means subtraction. Okay, difference also is one where we keep the order. So the order of the words that follow that are not going to change. So we're going to take a number, okay, which would be n, and indicates the operator, 7. So the difference of a number and 7 would be translated to a variable minus 7. Let's look at example 2. So 8 less than a number. So the key word here or key phrase is less than. Less than indicates subtraction. 
but the then in there indicates that we are going to reverse the order from the English to the math expression. So 8 was written first, so it is going to go behind the subtraction. And a number is written second, so it's going to go in front of the subtraction symbol. And again, you can use whatever variable that you want unless indicated otherwise. So 8 less than a number will be translated as x minus 8. Um, I'm going to just think, talk through a couple other examples here. If I had, instead of 8 less than a number, I said 8 subtracted from a number, you are starting with the number and then subtracting 8 from that. Okay, so that means that you st should start with your variable minus 8. Okay, moving on to translating multiplication. Now, multiplication, we don't have to worry so much about the order. Okay, so um, I've got the most common words written along the left here. We've got product, times, and multiply. And then we have some special ones. Double means not just multiply, but it means multiply by two. Twice also means multiply the result by two. And triple means multiply the result by three. So let's take a look at a couple examples. Example one, the product of a number and seven. So when you see the word product, that's your key word for multiply. Multiply, then it says multiply a number and seven. So the number is going to be a variable and is your operator seven. So x times seven. Now let's talk about the different ways that you could have written this answer because x times 7 is not the only way to indicate multiplication. When we're multiplying um, a variable and a number, we'll often write that with the number in front. So we can write 7 times x. And to be even, to write it even simpler, we can write the result as just 7 x. When you have a number next to a variable, it will indicate multiplication. So x times 7 is the same as 7 times x, which is the same as 7x. Also, remember multiplication, there's multiple ways to write it. So you can, the old school way was 2 times 7 with a cross symbol. And then when we start getting into x's, the multiplication symbol looks like an x, so instead of writing an x, we started replacing it with a dot. So 2 times 7 with a dot in between them. And we can also indicate multiplication with parentheses. So I can take 2 times 7, or 2 in the parentheses times 7, a little less common, or you can multiply 2 and 7 with both of them in parentheses. So all of these ways up here are ways to indicate multiplication. Okay, So you need to be comfortable with all um, of those methods of writing multiplication. Um, let's look at our second example. Twice a given number. Your keyword is twice. Twice indicates multiply, but it indicates a special multiplication. It means multiply by two. If you imagine if I said I have twice as much money as you, then that means you would take how much money you have in your pocket, multiply it by two, or how much money you have in your bank account. So twice means two times, and then a given number, that's going to be your variable. Okay, so, and the simplest way to write that is 2x. Let's move on to translating division. Translating division, you order does matter. 
because 4 divided by 2 is different than 2 divided by 4. Typically, though, when we translate, we do keep the order from the English into the mathematical expression. Now, for most students, the word quotient is the most unfamiliar of the words quotient, out of, ratio, divide, shared equally, and divided into, or divided by. So when you think of the word quotient, you should think division. Remember, there are multiple ways to write division. So in grade school, we used the division symbol. You can also write division as a fraction with a fraction bar, like some number over another number. Okay, And then um, if you were doing long division, you would have some number divided by another number. Okay, We are not going to be writing it this way. So now that we're moving into algebra, we typically prefer it written as a fraction. Okay, Although you may see some books still use the division symbol. So when I have the quotient of a number and 7, quotient indicates divide. I'm going to just use my divide symbol for first. So divide a number and 7. Keeping the order the same means the number goes in front, 7 goes behind. So that is one way to indicate the quotient of a number and 7 is n divided by 7. The way you would write that as a fraction would be the number up top as your numerator and 7 as your denominator. Again, keeping the order as you move numerator to denominator. Okay. Let's look at our second example. A given number divided by 5. So keyword here is divided by. That means that I'm going to have a division symbol or a fraction bar. I'm going to use a fraction bar now. A given number would be my variable divided by 5. 